You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. The Options Insider Radio Network is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity's Option Trade Builder tool can help you confidently build an options trade in three simple steps. Just choose a strategy, select a contract, and then review the benefits and risks of the trade. Learn more about Option Trade Builder at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. Well, thank you, Joe, for their very nice introduction. And, and Lynette, that was a wonderful uh, kickoff to this, uh, this day. Great thoughts. Um, and I'm delighted to be with you, with you here today, and I'm particularly delighted to be with this very distinguished panel of, of, uh, of industry folks that we have with you today. And I know you're going to enjoy hearing their thoughts and their perspectives. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their businesses. So I'd like to start off. Uh, to my left, Matthias. Good morning, everybody. Thanks uh, very much for uh, Philip Capital for hosting us here today. My name is Matthias Rietig. I'm uh, with the uh, Japanese Exchange Group, uh, representing Osaka, uh, Osaka Exchange. We are the derivatives market of, of, of JPX. Um, mother market of Nikkei, two to five futures, mini futures, options, as well as topics and JGB futures. Um, just like to give you one, all you guys, or some of you may be uh, a bit concerned about the uh, uh, HST registration in Japan, right? A bit uh, of, of a heads up there. <clears throat> so we're very lucky to tell uh, you guys that every, uh, actually 95% of our participants uh, have registers or are in the process of registering. So that's, that's uh, very smooth. So luckily, uh, there's no impact on the market on that front. Um, additionally, uh, what happened last year in Japan, over the last year since we last spoke here, uh, and had a pleasure to see you guys. Um, I just want to give you a, a brief overview uh, on the uh, right and left, yeah. Um, basically, uh, continuously we see uh, uh, mostly um, the impact of global global uncertainty right in our market, which is, of course, uh, in a way helpful for our volumes during the night session. So continuously we see the trading volume increasing there. Um, also happy to tell you guys that uh, the Mother's Futures, which we have launched uh, uh, two years back, um, is also seeing increasing demand. Uh, especially by retail and uh, foreign investors. And then uh, last but not least, um, for some of you that have come from, 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 from other markets and are not trading Asia um, and are more used to a global approach to trading, we have, um, uh, we'll be introducing uh, self-trade prevention in our market. It's not going to be comp compulsory, but it's going to go live uh, Q1 next year. So much from us. I was told if I talk too long, I get cut off, so I'll just hand on over to KRX. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Hun Gun. Thank you. Uh, my name is Yang Gun Ji, uh, head of the uh, global derivatives, global sales, and business development. I've been in uh, CARX about uh, 17 years. And uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, Ms. Lim, and uh, Tyler Hussain from Singapore, and other all public capital uh, people for inviting CARX to this wonderful event once again. And. Uh, I'd like to talk about a little bit about the uh, recent update on Korean exchange derivatives market following the, uh, the slide up, up, front, up here. Uh, you know, uh, Korea is, used to be one of the uh, biggest exchange in terms of volume about like seven years ago. 
uh, especially cost P200 options is, is a really uh, huge contract. But because of some sanction in the uh, regulatory issue, the volume dropped a lot. But recently, it, uh, there is some volatility happened in the market, and uh, uh, now it's uh, recovering a little bit. And uh, daily volume for the options is about uh, a little bit more than 2.5 million contract. And also, we have cost P200 futures uh, upfront, and the, uh, also we have like uh, uh, US dollar, Korean one uh, currencies, and uh, 10 years, 30 years KTB. So we covered most of the uh, all the financial uh, product. And the bottom two contract is a recently growing contract. The first one is single stock futures. Futures really growing fast, and we have 132 items in the market. And the volume for the uh, contract is about a little bit more than 2 million contract daily. Almost uh, to the left side is last product that I want to introduce is a uh, uh, Costock 100 futures contract. I don't know you, I don't know much about Costock market. It's Costock is second cash market in Korea. It's more like co focusing on IT and the small, medium con uh, size con uh, companies. And, uh, and it's growing really fast. And, uh, now I want to talk about uh, recent achievement in regulatory issue. The first one is like uh, in March. I'm sorry, uh, I think it's uh, in this summer, we got an achievement from the Taiwanese regulator, thanks to the help from Typex. So we got a product approval. So now Taiwanese uh, uh, investors can trade Carex product. And second one is, is about US regulator. Um, we got a, SEC called SEC class relief for the, our options product. So now uh, here in US, uh, investors can directly trade our options product uh, from this fall. So I think this is really good moment for us and also the, uh, here in the US investors. And uh, finally, I'll a little bit talk about uh, what's, what's gonna happen next year. Uh, we try to introduce the weekly options for the cost trend op uh, uh, options. So we almost done with our regulators. So we are targeting like first maybe quarter next year. So we are also very excited about uh, uh, this new product. Uh, that's pretty much I want to talk with you and pass with the uh, to our other panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Alan. Oh, thank you. Uh, Good morning, everyone. everyone. My name is uh, Alan Lee. I'm the uh, senior executive vice president of the Taiwan Huge Exchange. I'm supervising. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, supervising the trading and the Korean department. The, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Philip the Huge. The, for organizing this event. It allows the uh, local investors to, to get a better understanding of the Asia exchange, like Taifax. Taiwan Huge Exchange is the, is the sole uh, futures and options exchange in Taiwan. It has been run for the more than 21 years. We just passed the 20 years to become adult. So we run this uh, operation is uh, about uh, 20 years. The, we provide the uh, wider ranges of the products. The, for instance, we have the uh, equity, equity index, uh, FX uh, interest rate, and uh, uh, commodity futures. The, so those products the, just provide uh, for the investor to join our market. Our flagship is the product is the, uh, we call it Thai futures and options. The Thai uh, index, the, we call it Taiwan uh, capitalization weighted uh, stock index. The, so it's the known as the Thai X. The Thai futures and the Thai options the, uh, is counted for about 90% of our trading volumes. The, is all the big, the major is the products the, in Taiwan. Is the, you look at the pie, the chart, is the, most is the 90% comes from those the 
products. And uh, we have the highly liquid, liquid the products the, in this the markets. And also, I will tell you that all the uh, market structures, the, which is the 50% uh, institutional investor and the 50% is the retail investor, this is very balanced the market structures. The, so if the institutional investor join our market, has a lot greater uh, room for the growth. The, so that's why every time Mr. we hold the low shows the overseas, the, we're talking about the structures. The, they are very interesting in our market. Last year, the our do a very good job and achieve the way uh, performers. The, we have the this the lost the products the, have the about the nine percent growth the, in the last years, the, over the 2016. And we have the, almost the four years, the, we, the trading volumes the, get very 200 million contracts. The, so every uh, average, the daily trading volumes, the, uh, more than the one million contracts the, for all the total is the market. So this is very uh, liquid market and the very attractive uh, to the foreign participant or the local the participant. Just the contribution comes from the one we have the uh, after our trading session. This is the we launched this the last year. The, until now, this the trading volume almost grows the 20% of the regular trading hours. The, so this is a very attractive the, our uh, local people and the foreign participants because they cover the whole uh, time zones, the, including the Euro market and the US market. So this is to uh, get more people to join this market. Others, the, we have the very strong the, uh, foreign participation. Is the, this also contribution is to time facts, the, the goals. The, from the 2014, is the, we got about 9%, but till now it's the, almost the, above the 20%. If the week covers the local proprietary, foreign proprietary trading, is the, almost the, we have the 30% is the foreign participation. So this means that we can attract more people to join the Typhax market. Others, the, we have the very good uh, IT teams the in-house, the, so they can provide the very uh, good systems the, and the maintain these the systems the, for the Typhax the, the capability to handle the IT system. So we can uh, cater to the investors to join our market. So we hope we can invite more uh, local people to participate in Typhax. Looking to the the future is that we uh, just focus the four areas. The, we hope we can up push Typhax to, to the next table and uh, get our maintains, the, our momentous goals. The, the first one, we just uh, try to get more the products uh, innovations. The, so we need to get more uh, products. So we align with the, so the others the, uh, exchange, for instance, the, Japan or the CME or the uh, NSE, something like exchange or ICE, we try to uh, get this uh, cooperation with them. Others, the, we, uh, the second, we just try to improve the, of the rule and the regulation, more in line with the international norms. The, the third, we just try to enhance the, our IT systems to, to attract the more foreign participation. The last one, we are just try to force the, our uh, cooperation, international cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Matthew. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Matthew Lomprea, um, and I run a business over in um, Hong Kong um, for um, a company called BSO Networks. Um, and uh, what we do is provide 
um, uh, high performance networks and low latency networks, data centers, colo, cloud, etc., cetera, um, that allows uh, people like yourselves to do um, international trading. So just listening to Alan then talking about how the IT systems are encouraging trade from overseas and uh, our networks uh, carry those those trades. So um, we, we specialize in access to, um, to sort of new and non-traditional markets. So we have networks across the Middle East, um, India, um, Taiwan, obviously Japan, and uh, we're, we're in over 100 exchange um, and, and other data centers globally where the financial markets participants tend to congregate. So um, we have a little uh, booth at the back as well, um, uh, and we'd love to, uh, to meet as many of you as possible later on today. Um, it's great to see so many colleagues from Hong Kong and, and Singapore over here. Um, it's great to see the sun as well in Chicago, because we don't get to see that too often in Hong Kong. So, uh, so it's fabulous to be here, and uh, thank you very much for your very kind invitation to, to join this fantastic panel. Thank you. Well, thank you, Matthew. Um, so now I want to uh, ask each of our panelists uh, some questions that uh, will help us understand a little bit more about some of the exciting opportunities that are happening uh, in Asia and in, in some of their own businesses. And uh, Matthias, I'm going to start with you. Uh, JPS has taken the lead in the Asia Pacific region in exploration of distributed ledger and blockchain chain technology. Can you tell us a little bit more about your efforts? Um, sure. I mean, uh, without going too much into detail, because I think that would be a panel uh, on a separate subject. But um, we do, we do, uh, we did conduct a POC uh, with, with with IBM, so we very closely monitor the efficiencies. Uh, and together with NRI and IBM, uh, we did a POC with regards to the implementation of blockchain uh, in the exchange business space, right? And. Uh, uh, we found that um, in the post-trade space, there is uh, certainly a lot of uh, opportunity in, in that space, right? And we very closely monitored and tried to be uh, ahead of the curve in that sense. Um, uh, and a bit more, in a bit more, in a bit more real-time or a real-world uh, implementation of, of blockchain, we already also, um, or fintech in general, in a wider sense, uh, we also employ uh, AI-assisted. Uh, um, uh, we have AI assisted uh, systems and, and, and processes that we're looking at with regards to um, market surveillance, um, post trade surveillance, right? Uh, we feel we find there's a lot of opportunity there, and also, of course, um, in, 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 in labor intensive uh, uh, repetitive work such as um, uh, listing procedures and things like that. So, we have a dedicated team that is uh, called a FinTech a New Business Development Team uh, within JPX, or actually, it's part of the holding. Uh, company and they um, they constantly monitor opportunities in that space and we're always open to, to listen to new ideas and uh, see what sort of opportunities are out there. Now as you've gone through this process of un trying to understand a little bit more about distributed ledger and blockchain technology, are there any lessons that you've learned that you might be able to share with our audience? Um, yeah, as I say, right, I mean, of course, uh, as, a, as, as an exchange, we're in the center, center of gravity for, of, of financial markets. And um, as, a, as an ecosystem, uh, it has to be uh, some sort of, um, I mean, we cannot be the first mover. I, I know there's exchanges out there that uh, actually do uh, implement or try to actually be, be, f be faster than the, than the users. But we find that, of course, it has to be some sort of concerted uh, uh, development, right? Um, but um, of course, um, at the end of the day, uh, it's very clear that uh, uh, our industry is changing in a very, very fast pace. And um, as I said, uh, for us, it's, it's just very much key to, to be ahead of or on top of these developments. Thank you, Matthias. Hun Jun, as you mentioned, your exchange recently received no action relief from the SEC for the trading of COSPI options in the US. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you plan to capitalize on this opportunity? All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Molly. Uh, I don't know how much you know about the uh, SAC class auction relief. It's, uh, it's a little bit long name, but uh, it means a lot to us because we have one of the biggest options market in the world, and, uh, and also U.S. investors can directly trade our options product here in U.S. So. Uh, 
what happened before we got this uh, SAC class leave is that uh, major U.S. investors who has an office in Singapore, Hong Kong, or maybe Tokyo, wherever in Asia and Pacific region, they are our main target of the uh, our options product because only they can trade. But now after we got this new class relief, we can do more active marketing activity and sales activity by us or by our brokers uh, from this moment. So uh, that's, that's uh, I think, a big achievement of this year. So also I'd like to say a little bit about uh, the, our regulatory uh, achievement we have done before. For instance, uh, we got a we got a got a product approved uh, achievement product uh, certification for our Cospi futures and uh, no, uh, mini Cospi futures also from CFTC, and uh, we got a part thirty exemption which is for our brokers to uh, more to doing act, uh, sales and marketing activity for the, our futures product uh, two years ago which means that we've been solving most of the, our regulatory issue uh, from both CFTC and CC, uh, which means that we have more room to, to do our, our um, uh, for marketing sales activity for our uh, major product. So I think that's a, that's a very exciting news for us and uh, all the investors here in the U.S. So, Maybe we have, we have more opportunity to work with the, our U.S. brokers, maybe here in the capital U.S. or other major brokers in Singapore, uh, in, on, in the, uh, Chicago, or maybe New York. So, yeah, let's see and what can we do with this new achievement. And uh, currently we have booths here in, uh, during the export uh, from tomorrow, so please stop by our booths and uh, maybe we can get more information from, the, uh, from our market. Thank you. That certainly is a very exciting uh, a development uh, for your exchange. Uh, Alan, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit more about Tyfex's launch of its Brent crude futures contract. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the contract and who your target audience is. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, give my opportunity to discuss about the, the brand crude oil futures launch. Uh, first of all, the, our corporate uh, mandate, the, we try to uh, invig invigorate the, our the, uh, futures trading, and also the, we try to serve our the, uh, real economy. So the, I just mentioned that we very focused on our the index the, uh, financials, the uh, products. So now we try to move to the uh, commodities to, to cover this area to serve our the locals, the uh, investors. So that's why we uh, cooperate with IC to launch this the, the crude oil futures. And also, before uh, we started to launch this uh, product, we consulted with the, our local the, uh, petroleum uh, capital market, and uh, we have the uh, energy importer, something other company in energy industry, to understand what they need, and uh, they use this uh, kind of product uh, to, for the hedge. So let's we try to uh, invent this kind of product. Also, so we know the brand crude oil futures uh, is very important for our local uh, this industry because they need to use this uh, products for hedge because they almost uh, you know, trade with the international company. They import uh, a lot of the oil, oil products, or they uh, import the crude oil. So this is uh, very affecting their the production cost. If Tyfax uh, launch this kind of product, we can give them the opportunity to trade our product in domestic market. Also, they can reduce their uh, cost. Uh, hedging cost. So that's why we choose the, this product. Also, the, 
the, uh, the blend core oil is very uh, important deciding factors of the, uh, to our uh, fuel price. Because our local uh, petroleum companies, they decided their fuel price based on the formula of which the brand crude oil is very important factor. So that's why we think this is a very attractive the local the retail investor to use this the, uh, product. Also, the, all the people, all the domestic pe uh, people, and it means the investor, the traders, the foreign the, uh, products, the, the, brand, the crude oil products is the top four in our uh, market. So they trade the foreign the, the, the uh, products is very important for them. So it lost the factor. So why we choose the risk uh, brand oil to cooperate with the uh, IC to launch this product. And we, you, we know that our the target is the, is the retail and also how we call it security investment, the trust the company. Others, the others, the local, the same, we call the same, uh, small, medium, the enterprise, the, use this, the product. So those, the, our the target market. But the, in Taiwan, we know all the retail is very important because they just, as mentioned, is the 50% investor comes to the retail. So why we designed this the product is the first uh, use the uh, denomination of the anti dollars. The, they try to uh, use this the product to trade in Taiwan without uh, bearing the currency the risk. The second is that we use the small uh, country size, the, just 200 barrels. The, they try to attract the more the retail participation. The third is the, we use the, the, settle, uh, the case settlement. That's the, is the very fit to our market. So those the design just the, for our consideration. Is the, but so far, we launched the um, uh, second of the July, only the three months. The, so far, the trade, the day, every, every daily trading volume is around the 300 a country. We know this is the small, but we think is the we need to take time to uh, cook to try to get more the participation. Maybe we can increase our uh, trading value. That's our uh, objective. Thank you. Well, thank you, Alan. I think that sounds like a very important new product uh, for retail customers, for hedgers, for traders, uh, and. Uh, I think it'll be a, a product that will be very well received and, and will grow uh, very well. Uh, Matthew, uh, BSO just recently completed connectivity to Indo INX. What great timing ahead of the recent CME announcement. Uh, can you explain INX in a little bit more detail for our audience? Yeah, absolutely. I will, I'll do my best. So um, INX is an exchange created in um, a new city in India called Gift City, which is the, um, and I'll, it's a bit of a mouthful, but the Gujarat International Finance Tech City. So, uh, so Gift City is, uh, is a much easier way of describing it. Um, it's based up in the north of India in Prime Minister Modi's um, home state. And it's um, basically been created as a brand new city. Um, the intention is to rival um, uh, Hong Kong and Singapore as a, as a finance hub um, within the region. So um, there are a number of tax and other um, benefits to uh, foreign investors setting up in Gift City rather than um, going into Mumbai or, or other cities there. 
Um, so there are at least five different taxes that you don't have to pay if you're there. I'm, I'm not a tax expert, so please don't ask me what they are, but there's at least five different taxes that, um, that you won't have to pay being based there, and it's very much targeted um, on international investors to come into India, um, particularly around the futures industry. Um, also, the trade's done in US dollars um, rather than rupees, so you don't have an FX risk either. So um, what, what we did is, as uh, part of what I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, we do specialise in, um, in new markets. And uh, we've been working with um, the INX Exchange, who are part of um, BSE. There are other exchanges there that are um, owned by uh, NSE, for example. Um, but we've worked with INX to actually open up some international connectivity for them. So if you're based anywhere around the world, um, we can help you connect into uh, to INX, and we're the first people to do that. Uh, CME have just announced their global access product as well, which is fantastic, and I think that adds um, a lot of credibility to what um, what is happening in uh, in Gift City. So uh, I think an exciting time for futures industry, an exciting time for India, um, and uh, we are obviously watching very closely, and we hope it'll be uh, be a huge success. I think there's um, now about two or three hundred different trading products as well that are available there. So um, it, it should hopefully do well. Great. Thank you, Matthew. Matthias, I'm going to come back to you. Um, earlier this year, Topics contract was launched on CME Globex. Yep. How has that launch affected volume and open interest? <laughs> um, yeah, of course. Um, we have licensed the, 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 the topics license out to the CME, uh, so to, uh, topics futures are now available on, on the CME Global platform. And uh, the rationale there for us was, of course, to expand the, the, the universe of investors that have access to this product, right? Um, and also, of course, take advantage of arbitrage opportunities between CME, uh, pretty much analog to what is happening between uh, SGX, CME, and uh, OSC, right, where you can trade the triangle of Nikkei contracts. Um, but uh, so far, uh, the start has been a bit slow, but uh, I think that the uh, CME has also uh, uh, analyzed this, and uh, they, 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 will, they will see, uh, they will put a bit more effort into, into growing this product. So, um, so far, it's been very smooth. Um, it's also pretty much in line with our strategy to, 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 to work closer with, with foreign partners, right? We also have a, um, a data center uh, alliance, so to speak, where you can access uh, Japan out of the CME data center, for example, right? Uh, or I have access to, um, in a way, uh, subsidized lines, right? Uh, connectivity between data centers, uh, various uh, global financial centers. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's going very well. I mean, it was a smooth start, um, and we'll have to see how, how, this, how this product will grow going forward. But um, of course, um, the idea is to have more uh, eyeballs on, on, on our products. And do you think the product is one that it, it appeals to professional traders, to institutions, to retail customers. Uh, who, who will gravitate to the product? Um, generally speaking, the topics, uh, the topics contract is a bit more uh, institutionalized, dominated uh, contract opposed to the um, because it's a much more a wider, uh, wider, uh, wider universe of stocks that is, is being covered, right? So in Japan, uh, it, it's mostly institutional traders. Um, so it, it certainly appeals to macro traders, right? They want to have a view on Japan as a whole. Um, the Nikkei contract is a bit more, in that sense, volatile, right? And appeals more to, to, to retail contracts, but also playing trades like the uh, NT ratio, right, uh, between uh, Nikkei and Topics is something that a lot of investors or uh, global uh, participants look at. So from that perspective, I think um, we do have also what we call a, a Topics Mini, for example, that is tailored to retail. Um, but of course, uh, there the, 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 mini, the mini Nikkei is, is, is a more successful product. But I think um, it fits in, into everyone's portfolio that is looking to get exposure to uh, Japan. Thank you, Matthias. Yes. Gun, yes. can you address how KRX is helping Vietnam launch an exchange? Uh, actually, the question should be what KRX has done for uh, their IT infrastructure upgrade. We are not yeah. helping them to launch exchange ah. because there are already two exchanges already there. Yeah. So, um, so in Vietnam, there is a Hanoi Stock Exchange and uh, Ho Chi Minh Stock Exchange, both established 2005 and 2000. And uh, apparently, what actually they are trying to merge each other. 
So it's I think a little in the announced. So I don't know when exactly the, the date. But uh, what CareX is doing for them is help them to their uh, next generation IT infrastructure for the merge exchange. The project that started like 1996. It's already, it's a really long project. And it's, it's a targeting this end of this year. It's pretty much done. So we, what we are doing is help them to get their like a whole range of the uh, IT infrastructure for the exchange, for instance, like trading, clearing and settlement, surveillance, index, all, all of them. Mm -hmm. So we've been working with them really long time and uh, hopefully it will be successfully finished uh, end of this year. So not just uh, Vietnam, we've been, we've been like long history of the uh, providing IT service to other exchange in Asia and the uh, Middle uh, Asia in the Eastern European country, for instance. We've been doing project with the, uh, actually we have the more than 50% share for Laos and the Cambodian exchanges. So we actually helped them to launch the uh, exchanges. So. And we had other project in the uh, Mongolia, Ukraine, Romania, and Azerbaijan. I'm sorry. Azerbaijan, so I'm sorry to be on the name of the country. But, uh, Uzbekistan, I'm sorry about that. So. That's kind of our IT business, to selling our infrastructure to the other countries. So, yeah, that's, that's the, what I have done. So Carex. is it, do you provide just um, physical infrastructure, or are you also helping them with bringing your exchange expertise in other areas uh, of the exchange? Basically, IT infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. There's a clearly, clearly a need, and uh, yeah. you've uh, obviously Bring a lot to uh, bring a lot to the party when you uh, mm -hmm. when you bring your IT infrastructure there. Um, Alan, uh, the growth in R and B futures has exploded in the past year. What differentiates your product from those products offered in Hong Kong and the CME Group? Okay, uh, R and B is the uh, product. Is the, yeah. I just mentioned is the Typhax, the uh, outer strings, the products that uh, just focused on the uh, recorded index, uh, equity index, the uh, futures and the option. They account for about 90%. But the, we still need for the development of the market. So we still need uh, looking for the uh, uh, feasible the product to expand uh, our product line. So we try to get more uh, other products. So uh, according to the uh, FIA the data, uh, compile the data, the, we know the uh, anti dollars the, versus the uh, others, the foreign currency is the all the potential products. But now our central bank is not allowed we issue these kinds of products. The, because they worry about uh, the effect of the fluctuation of the anti dollars. So that's why we need to consider looking for other products, something like the uh, renminbi. Uh, considering the, the three factors, one is the, we have the cost relationship between China and the Taiwan exist. The second is the, we have the very, uh, Strong, uh, they, you know, reserves. The, uh, we have the deposits, the more than the three hundred billion uh, deposit. Also, is the, uh, this is our local uh, factory, all the same small, medium uh, company enterprise. The, they have the business with the uh, men in China. So, those the factories that we think try to get this. The, uh, choose the RMB as our uh, first priority for the futures and the options. The, so let's say so we use the RMB to uh, develop our product. So we develop the, the futures. First of all, we develop the futures. The, we uh, develop two kinds. One is the, uh, we call a RH, the RHF. This is the, almost the same the Hong Kong the aspects. The other one is we call 
PF is to for the local uh, market. That's, so that's the country size is a different. One is the uh, 100,000 100, is the uh, renminbi. The other one is the uh, 20,000 is the renminbi. So the different, the, you know, uh, labels. So we try to attract the different type of the uh, investors. The, and also we uh, develop the, our uh, option because the option we do very good and we have the a uh, lot of experience to run the option. So why we choose the RMB underlying is the, for our uh, option is the, So try to get this the product we can do the, uh, the investor can trade our product as the different strategy, use the option and the futures combination. So we develop this kind of the option. The third is the we are uh, Cooperate with the uh, state SMP uh, to develop the, the we call the renminbi is the index. This is the cooperation is comprised of the we call the SMP, Typex, the uh, RHF, the, the index. The other one is the SMP, Typex, the RTF uh, uh, index. This is the index to try to get more some the local security investor in trust. They can uh, issue the something like an ETF. They can use this to uh, become their the products to develop the, the some kinds of uh, direct uh, products to the trade the Typex. But hopefully they will issue this kind of the, uh, ETF. So those days the consideration is the why we choose uh, RMB to launch the RMB uh, FX. But we still have uh, some constraint. First of all, we, you know, local people cannot uh, convert in the settles the, within the 20,000 RMB every day. But the other constraints, the, our app, local FCM cannot help the, in, uh, the investor to conversion is the, the change of the money. So those are the constraints to just uh, place our uh, volume with the trading. But uh, anyways, the, those the, the, the constraint, but the Typex still put a lot of effort to uh, promotion and education, teach the people as to how to trade uh, our lost product. I think it's the, we still need to take time to cook. But uh, anyway, we launched this the product, but we can bring the new blood into our spectrum of the custom base. That is very important for Typex. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Matthew. BSO has made a substantial commitment to the Asia-Pacific region. From a strategic standpoint, what drove you to make such a significant investment? Thank you. Um, I mean, it's Asia, isn't it? I mean, what an amazing marketplace. Um, you've, you've heard from some of the key exchanges here on the panel with me um, about some of the exciting developments that, that they're doing across the region. Um, as well as that, you've got China and Indonesia and these massive markets that are um, that are really still in growth phase as, as far as we're concerned. Um, I think Asia is probably the hub for crypto and crypto trading. Um, there's a whole range of uh, new exchanges um, that are well funded and are going to be properly regulated popping up across the region. Um, you look at the BIS, Bank of International Settlements Report on foreign exchange and how foreign exchange is growing dramatically across Asia. Um, and there's fantastic liquidity there. I was talking with some people from the Australian Stock Exchange or Securities Exchange recently about why people in Chicago are so interested in trading on the ASX and the, the liquidity they have there. Um, and again, there's just some fantastic opportunities um, all across the region. Just whichever country I look at and whichever country and exchange I talk to, there's um, just interest in, um, in trading those markets. Um, 
We're also covering um, the Middle East out of Asia. So um, we've recently also um, done a contract with the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange, similar to INX. Um, we carry about 80% of the DGCX um, overseas trades as well. Um, you know, you, you look at Middle East, um, the Gulf region, again, huge potential growth there over the next few years. So, um, so I think when, when you look at the history of, of BSO, um, we've, we've expanded dramatically in, uh, in Europe and the States, and Asia is, uh, is clearly the place that we need to be uh, focusing our efforts now um, because of all the interest, uh, as I've just described. So um, I, I think particularly um, FX as well for Asia is, uh, is a huge market there. Potential. So uh, we, we've invested substantially. We've opened offices in Hong Kong and, and Singapore. Um, we've recruited staff out there, and I think it's uh, it's very exciting times and so great to see all the uh, the Asian exchanges well represented here. It's fabulous. Well, you certainly have had a strong growth story. I wondered if you could share with us what sets up, sets you apart from a from your services offering to your value proposition that's really let you grow as you have. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, this is our core business. This is what we do. We, we deliver infrastructure that allows, um, allows people to trade global markets, whether people need the best latency or resilient paths or co-location hosting or access to cloud services. Um, that's all we do. So um, I think that, that makes us stand uh, in, a, in a different place from some of the other companies that maybe have a few of those services as part of, you know, mobile services and broadband and TV and other, and other services back in their home markets. Um, this is what we do and this is what we specialize in. So everyone within the company lives and breathes this, whether it's the pricing people or the lawyers or the help desks. Um, this is what they understand and this is what they do. So, you know, we, we won't take someone's service down during a Friday afternoon trading session because we want to do maintenance on it, for example. Other companies may do that. Um, so, so I think we, we're so focused on this. Um, I think that's what's, you know, created the growth and that's why we're in business today. Well, thank you, Matthew. And uh, I'm looking at the clock, and I know we have a few minutes left, so I wanted to give the audience a chance uh, to ask some questions. Uh, do you have any questions? Well, if not, then I'm going to thank our panel uh, for a very informative uh, session this morning. Um, and uh, you shared a lot about your growth plans about your successes, and there have been many successes uh, with all of your businesses. You should be quite proud. And, uh, and your look at the future. Thank you again. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.